I do know that people want to get into the big name, big boxes, et cetera. But maybe building and investing in a strong digital e-commerce business might be better for your business. So make decisions around your business based on what's good for your business, not what's not based on what other people are doing for their businesses. And I think that's really important because sometimes people have goals that are not right for their business, but because it's seen as a marker of success, they try to pursue those goals. So very excited to have my friend Rahama here. Thank you so much for joining us. Happy International Women History Month. What a time to continue celebrating female innovators. So much to dive in. Congratulations on so many milestones you recently have. We're going to dive all into it. But first, before we dive into the big pictures, I thought it'd be always great to revisit the humble beginnings. Bring us back to young childhood time. Who did you want it to be? Why was that important? And what were the dreams that you had when you were a child? Wow, we're really going deep right from the beginning. Hi, Monica. Thanks for having me. And happy International Women's History Month for, uh, for you as well. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Uh, okay, so as a child, I wanted to be a lawyer. I wanted to be a lawyer and I wanted to fight for children's rights. And that was what, when I was really little, that's what I just thought it was so cool to be an advocate for young people and be an advocate for people who need help. So that was one of the things I wanted to do when I grew up. How did you know and what helped you have the confidence to know that maybe I'm the person and I can do something called a business to solve this problem in a unique way that others have not. Honestly, I think it was being young and not really knowing. I didn't question my capabilities of whether or not I could do it. I just dove right in because I saw something that I felt was wrong. I, I saw something that I felt was a justice issue. And it wasn't a question of, whether or not I could do it. It was a question of how to do it. And I think, yeah, I was in my early 20s and I think I had the confidence because I really didn't know what I was signing up for. Maybe if you ask me today, I may have a different response in terms of if I would do it all over again. But, but back then I was just, I was very upset. I was angry that these women were not being included and that their labor was being taken advantage of. And I wish I could say it only happens in these communities, but it happens everywhere globally. Anywhere you see indigenous populations, rarely do you see them benefiting from their knowledge, from their labor, from their resources. I'm curious, how did you think of the name for your company? What does it mean? And yeah, what's the origin story for that? So Yaline, Shea is the name of the tree, right? The Shea tree, Shea fruit. Yaleen is Bambara and it means light and hope. And I, when I was a Peace Corps volunteer in Mali, I learned Bambara. It's a little shaky because I haven't spoken in a while, but it means light and hope. And so we're bringing light to the issue that these women are dealing with and then hope by creating living wage jobs through our supply chain. That's so beautiful. Thank you for sharing. I want to dive a little bit more in the nitty gritty of the day to day because as you share the drive helps, but let's be realistic. Entrepreneurship definitely has many ups and downs. <laughs> and what's been your secret sauce for addressing failures, negativity, or challenges that you face? Because there's folks out there mm -hmm. who's tuning in. I was like, you two, that's great. But what do I do when I want to give up? I'm like, things are mm -hmm. getting tough. What do you do? So I have a spiritual practice that helps to keep me grounded. I practice Christianity and I go to prayer often, especially when things feel like they're completely falling apart. And I think being an entrepreneur for me personally has really built my faith because when I read things that faith is believing in something that you can't see and just realizing that many of the things that have been fought for and people who have been fighters before and fought for rights and fought for things that allow me to live the life that I live, they believed in something bigger and greater and they were 
willing to put their lives on the line for it. So to play devil's advocate, how do we know when to give up? Because going back to your comment, when certain things take nine months, years, sometimes we have to let go if something's not working. How do you know? Oh, I'm the wrong person to an answer that question. I hold on till the bare end. My fingernails are on the edge of the cliff and I'm still holding on. <laughs> I don't necessarily know if it's giving up or if it's re-strategizing if is the answer. Ultimately, in pursuing your goal or objective, that may not change, but the way you pursue it might change. 